You are Locked On Patriots, your daily New England Patriots podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Patriots fans, Raider Nation, it is crossover Thursday here on the Locked On Podcast Network, crossing over the New England Patriots and the Las Vegas Raiders, their matchup coming up on Sunday, December 18th, Allegiant Stadium in Paradise, Nevada, 4.05 p.m. kickoff here on the East Coast, over on the West Coast, it is 1.05 p.m., and this is one that has been circled on the calendars of both fan bases. I'm Mike DeBate, host of the Locked On Patriots podcast. And of course, I am joined by your boy Q, host of Locked On Raiders, and we're going to cross those streams in just a moment. But first, folks, just want to remind you that Crossover Thursday here on the Locked On Podcast Network is presented by our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is so much fun, and it's so easy to play. No competing with other players. It's just you versus the projections available. You pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. It can literally take less than 60 seconds to enter. That's right, folks. It's that easy. We love prize picks. We know that you will, too. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. Q, it is always an honor and always a pleasure to join you on the microphone anytime we get to do any type of collaborative work here on Locked On, but it's especially fun when it's a crossover, and it's especially fun with all of the all of the crosshairs between these two teams right now, and I've fumbled that a little bit, but you know what? I think it's appropriate. Uh, yeah. There is a lot of synergy between these two franchises right now. Yeah, there really is. You know, we've talked in the past before, and, and we usually talk about the past, right? That's usually what the Raiders and the Patriots have in common is things of old. We talk about the tuck rule. We talk about this, that, and the <laughs> other, right? But this time this time around, I mean, you got coaches that used to be with the Patriots, now with the Raiders. You got players that used to be in New England, now with the Raiders. I mean, there's so much going on. There's, you know, not really a whole lot of success right now with the Raiders. And, you know, offensively for the Patriots, there's some struggles. So, yeah, man, there's a lot of – intermingling and crosshairs and everything so yeah you hit it right on the head man you did it perfectly <laughs> absolutely yeah and you know what it is a lot of fun to do these crossovers and especially when bill belichick and josh mcdaniels are staring across from each other on various sidelines it's always going to be a lot of fun and folks we're going to talk a lot about the key matchups things to watch what to keep an eye on in this one but q as we all know matchups between two teams that are right now still vying for a playoff spot. I know a lot of Raiders fans may roll their eyes, but at five and eight, they're still alive in this New England Patriots clinging to that final seventh AFC playoff spot. Wins are a premium. They absolutely yeah. are a premium. And when you look at the two teams and the trajectory that they're both following, this is a must win for both clubs. So be that as it may, for the benefit of my listeners on Locked On Patriots, what are the big storylines that the New England Patriots fans should keep an eye on when it comes to the Las Vegas Raiders heading into this matchup? Well, you know, there's a couple for the Raiders. One is just the story and the theme of the whole season where the Raiders are just trying to get on track. They're trying to find their way. They're trying to learn what Josh Daniels is trying to coach. You know, what uh, Patrick Graham is trying to coach defensively, what Mick Lombardi is trying to preach as the offensive coordinator. I mean, they're trying to pick that up and they're trying to master it. They haven't done that yet. There's glimpses where you're like, wow, okay, I can see what this team could look like. But then there's other moments where you scratch your head and say, what the hell was that, right? So, I mean, there's so many different, you know, storylines and and just, again, just guys not really on the same page yet, and they're still trying to figure things out. That's one big storyline. That's the overall big picture as far as the whole season goes. But I'll tell you, most recently, losing that Thursday night football game to the Rams and Baker Mayfield, who had only been on the team for about two days, uh, basically got a cup of coffee before he took the field in uh, SoFi Stadium on, uh, on Thursday night football, week 14. That one is really what's been lingering with Raider Nation. So now the big storyline is how do the team how does the team bounce back? How do they bounce back from a game that they had in the in in and they had it right there. They had the W and they lost it. And now it's the fourth loss that they've had this season by double that they had a double digit lead in, which is, you know, just something that can't happen. That that can't happen in the NFL. This is a 
production based business and the production hasn't been good in those games that they've lost. So if you have those four games that they were up by double digits and all of a sudden you turn those around and turn them into W's, I mean, you're a nine win team. So obviously they're not because they've only won five games. So that's the difference really in between a very successful season and a struggle of a season, which they've had. So uh, the short term storyline, how does the team bounce back from what they did Thursday night against the Rams where they lost that game to Baker Mayfield and the company? And then the big picture is, you know, at what point do they get on the same page with Josh McDaniels and the rest of the, the 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 coaching staff and the front office with what they want to do? So that's, I guess, in a nutshell, what the Patriot fans should be kind of looking for in this game on Sunday. As far as, you know, storylines for the Patriots, again, I, I know you mentioned that they're, you know, clinging to that last little playoff spot. What else do they have going on as far as storylines? <laughs> yeah, in terms of storylines right now, Q, for Raider Nation, the Patriots all about injuries right now, believe it or not. A rash of injuries running through the New England Patriots lost three key members in their victory over the Arizona Cardinals on Monday night. Devontae Parker sidelined with a head injury. That right now is under review from the NFL and the NFLPA. Uh, some question as to whether or not the independent spotter that was supposed to be monitoring the situation maybe dropped the ball a little bit and did not yank uh, Devontae as quickly as he should. He's currently under evaluation. He did not practice on Wednesday. So right now we're concerned and looking at his long-term health. If I'm being honest, prognosis for him suiting up on Sunday is right now iffy at best. So right. keep an eye on that. Uh, that would be a huge loss to the New England Patriots, one of their top receivers and definitely their top contested catch weapon on the uh, on offense. But it's more than that for the Patriots. Jacoby Myers, their top wideout right now, continues to remain in concussion protocol. And because of that, that could end up compromising the New England Patriots uh, wide receivers core by taking out their two top options. Now, Jacoby did come back to practice on Wednesday, was limited in his capacity. We haven't seen him cleared from concussion protocol. So that's one to monitor right there. But again, it does not end with the wideouts. The two top running backs for the New England Patriots have their own injury concerns. Ramondre Stevenson suffered an ankle injury on Monday night. He came out of the game came back in for a little bit, tried to give it a go, left the field, did not return. He did not practice on Wednesday. Something big time to monitor there. He's been one of the Patriots' workhorses so far and arguably their most consistent offensive player. Then you look at Damian Harris, their number two running back. Was their number one last year. Ramondre has leapfrogged him this year, but Damian suffering from a thigh injury. He hasn't practiced. He hasn't been out there a while. Did return to practice on Wednesday. Limited. So, Keep an eye on him. If Ramondre can't go, my guess is that Damian will do everything he can to be out there on Sunday. But again, just a rash of injuries for the New England Patriots. One good thing for the Pats, Christian Barmore, defensive tackle, missed the last four games. He's back out on the field. Uh, his 21-day window to return from injured reserve is open. So does that mean that we see Christian Barmore on Sunday? I'm optimistic as a Patriots fan. We'll see what happens. But right now, a lot of questions surrounding the New England Patriots health for a team that really needs to be as healthy as it can be, especially to get back on track on offense, Q. You, you know what's funny is that, and you hit it right there on the head, what you said, you said to get back on track on offense because what you told me right there is that, hey, the defense is healthy. <laughs> the defense is fine. And you know what? The defense has been playing lights out. They've been playing some really good ball. Obviously, we all saw him on the national stage on Monday night, come up with six <laughs> sacks. And, man, that that's one unit right there that uh, they don't need any extra help. And when you say Christian Barmore has been activated and he's got at least 20, you know, the 21-day window is open now, uh, I'm hoping, you know, for the Raiders' sake, that maybe they just hold him out a little bit longer and let him return after this game on Sunday. Because, man, I don't think that defensive line needs too much more help as of right now, at least. <laughs> yeah, the front seven's looking pretty good for the Patriots, but yeah. they, yeah, there are concerns uh, at the cornerback position. Jack Jones, the rookie, he's been electrifying in that secondary. He's battling a knee injury right now, did not practice on Wednesday, so keep an eye on that. And Jalen Mills has missed the last game with a groin injury. Mm. Optimistic that he may be able to give it a go on Sunday, but still, he is limited on his practice ability on Wednesday, so keep an eye on that. Derek Carr and the, the, uh, the, uh, the Raiders' uh, uh, brain trust on offense especially Josh McDaniels, going to be keeping a close eye on those two because if you're missing that key component of the secondary, this Patriots yeah. defense can break down a little bit. So that could be very much telltale for the Raiders and the Patriots this weekend, Q. 
It should, yeah, it should be interesting, and that is definitely going to be a hell of a chess match. I know we'll talk matchups coming up in the next segment. Uh, I guess the final storyline for both of us would probably have to be Belichick versus McDaniels. I mean, that's the storyline mm-hmm. that, that writes itself, and I'm sure that you've had to talk about it a lot. I have to talk about it more than I want to, and more than Josh <laughs> McDaniels wants to talk about it. But it's one of those, like I said, it's built in. It's obvious. It was there in the preseason when the two teams squared up. It's definitely going to be all week long leading up to this game on Sunday. Absolutely. Bill was not in a talkative mood when we asked him about that on uh, Wednesday. Uh, His response was, yeah, I've already discussed that. We talked about that in the preseason. And that's pretty much what you're going to get from Bill. No, I'm kidding, folks. He eventually will give Josh his just due. And look, there is no one that respects Josh McDaniels more than Bill Belichick. These two are still extremely close. They still have a very much respectful relationship between the two of them. No acrimony there. So this is going to be a friendly competition. But keep in mind that if there is a kryptonite to the Bill Belichick train. It is former coaches that know his tendencies. Mike Vrabel has had success against Bill in the past. Bill O'Brien has had a little bit of success against him in the past. Josh McDaniels has as well. He beat him when he was the head coach of the uh, Denver Broncos. Mm -hmm. The Raiders got the better of the Patriots in preseason. I know it's preseason, but still at the same time, something to watch there. Bill may have taught Josh everything he knows, but Josh absorbed an awful lot of what Bill knows and is very good at being able to read what he may do. So that's another one to keep an eye on this weekend. Q, there are so many storylines here, so much to talk about, and so many great storylines coming out of this. But as you and I both know, these games come down to the matchups. And that's exactly what we're going to discuss here on Locked On Patriots and Locked On Raiders Crossover Thursday when this episode continues. But first, at Locked On Patriots and at Locked On Raiders, we believe Home should be where you and your family feel the safest, especially over the holidays. This season, give yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system, and that is Simply Safe. Don't put this off, do it today, and here's why we both love Simply Safe. Simply Safe is a whole home security, advanced sensors, HD security cameras, just smarter ways to detect motion to alert you when a threat is actually real and fast protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe helps priority first response. Even hazard sensors that detect fires, floods, other threats to your home, 24 seven professional monitoring service that costs under a dollar a day, less than half the price of traditional home security systems. With the top rated Simply Safe app, you stay in complete control of your system. You can arm or disarm, unlock for a guest, access your cameras, or adjust system settings anytime and anywhere. So don't miss your chance to save big on my favorite home security system, and that's Simply Safe. You can get 40% off any new system at simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL today. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Patriots fans, Raider Nation, we are crossing the streams here on Crossover Thursday on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your boy Q, host of the Locked On Raiders Podcast, and of course myself, Mike DeBate, host of Locked On Patriots. Q, we teased in the previous segment that these games come down to the key matchups, and I know Raiders fans and Patriots fans are looking forward to seeing um, a lot of great football. I know Patriots fans are looking forward to seeing a lot of familiar faces on your side of the of the coin. Uh, but when you look at this from a Raiders perspective, what are the key matchups that you're eyeing in this game? And which ones do you think give the Raiders the edge here? Wow. I mean, now that you put that little uh, twist on the end right there, give the Raiders <laughs> the twist. That's a great question. Um, I would have to say Devontae Adams with whoever's matching up with them because he's Devontae mm-hmm. Adams, right? I mean, so, and I know that the Patriots defense is really their strength and they're playing really well there. Uh, so I just like Devontae Adams' chance pretty much with anybody, right? I mean, you've seen how great he right. can be. So I guess that's kind of the low-hanging fruit. That's the easy answer. Um, so I'll, I'll really – I'll kind of focus in on uh, the the trenches, right? And I'll, I'll say this as well when it comes to, you know, where's the Raiders' weaknesses. But I'll say for the strength, mm-hmm. I think they're, the trenches are uh, with Max Crosby trying to get after Mac Jones, right? I just I, just, I know mm-hmm. that the, the Patriots' offensive line isn't 100% solid. It's not the greatest, you know, it ain't the greatest uh, line of protection <laughs> there. And I think that Max Crosby, who's having a fantastic season, uh, is just going to continue to 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 get better and better and better and show who he is. So uh, I think that as far as strength, I'll just say, you know, Max Crosby, uh, potentially Chandler Jones, he's starting to get a little bit better each and every week. He's been playing a little bit better as of late. He got off to a very slow start. 
Uh, so I think that they're coming along pretty nicely. So I'll kind of look at those two guys and just say the Raiders defensive line against the, the Patriots offensive line. And then, of course, you got to throw in the, like I said, the low-hanging fruit of Devontae Adams against anybody because, well, he's Devontae Adams. And there's not necessarily a, a simple shutdown guy on the other side of the ball. There's some really good ones. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to sound disrespectful. <laughs> there's some really good players on that defensive side of the ball for the Patriots. But you also have Devontae Adams on the, <laughs> on the Raiders side of the ball. And he is fantastic and has been fantastic all season long. Absolutely. I am in complete agreement. And that is a matchup I'm closely watching is Devontae Adams ability to take advantage of what could be a banged up secondary for the New England Patriots. And I alluded to this in the previous segment. If Jalen Mills is compromised, even if he comes back, groin injuries are very, very difficult to gauge. He may be less than 100 percent. He's been very solid in terms of coverage this year for the Patriots. But if he is compromised in any way, that puts an awful lot of pressure on Jonathan Jones, who has been phenomenal since moving over from the slot into the perimeter area. He's their fastest corner. He's probably their best cover corner right now as well. So when you look at what Jonathan may have to do, he may be matched up in man coverage with Devontae if the Patriots are not capable of using that big nickel safety and swarming the other uh, defensive backfield with defensive backs. If that happens, we've seen guys like Justin Jefferson and Stefan Diggs absolutely shred this offense. So, uh, excuse me, shred this defense. So, if that is indeed the case, mm-hmm. advantage Raiders at that point. What do the Patriots do to try to take that away? Normally, what you would say is you would take Jack Jones, you would take Jonathan Jones, utilize those, maybe have Jonathan play on the Raiders number two receiver and have Jack and a combination of maybe Miles Bryant in the slot or maybe Jalen Mills try to contain Devontae Adams and possibly have Jabril Peppers, the enforcer at the safety position, come over and go over the top. That's been the Patriots' uh, modus operandi for success in trying to develop and really contain or marginally disrupt, I think is the best way to put it, um, what a uh, number one wideout like Devontae Adams can do. But Devontae can beat you in so many different ways that if the Patriots sputter in that regard, Derek Carr is going to eat that up and Devontae is going to feast on this secondary. So that is a matchup I really want to watch very closely. And I think it's going to come down to health on this one. On the offensive side of the ball for the New England Patriots, I know everybody's expecting me to talk about maybe Mac Jones trying to take advantage of the secondary, especially with Rocky Austin out right now or has been, dif- you know, had difficulty with his health. We don't know if he's going to be out on Sunday yet, but at this point, I'm more concerned if I'm the Patriots about trying to contain Chandler Jones. We know very well what Chandler can do up here in New England. And even though he got off to a slow start, four sacks in his last two games really shows that he's starting to settle in to the Raiders' defense. And Trent Brown, for lack of a better term, has not been Trent Brown that we remember from the previous years. He struggled a lot this year. (laughs) (laughs) And I know that brings a smile to Raiders fans' faces, and they're all going, I told you so. But Trent Brown has struggled this year. And even though Cole Strange has been a total stud as a uh, first-round draft pick, been very solid at the left guard position, He's still a rookie, and Chandler Jones is a savvy veteran. That can be a very lethal combination for the Raiders' favor if Trent Brown is suffering and he's not able to provide that protection from the left side. So if the Patriots can control the left side, that's going to be key for them to keeping Mac Jones healthy in the pocket, and I mean healthy figuratively in the pocket, keep him upright, and give him the time he needs to complete the passes that he needs to. That happens. Patriots have a chance to move the ball. If it doesn't, it's going to be a long day in Vegas for the New England Patriots. Well, I'll say this. Flip side, you know, you look at the weaknesses and the matchups that concern me the most when it comes to this game. I'm really looking at the trenches again, and I'm looking at what the Patriots have done, not only on Monday Night Football against the Cardinals coming up with six sacks, but really all season long. Mm -hmm. I mean, where they had around 45 sacks so far in the season. I mean, they're they're getting home. They've got dudes on that uh, defensive line, and so – Oh, uh, Alex Bars went down for the Raiders on uh, on Thursday night football against the Rams and the Raiders offensive line didn't really it didn't really, um, you know, rebound that well. They had John Simpson. They slid him into the right guard spot. He didn't play very well. They waved him on Friday. So uh, there's a there's a big question mark on this Raiders offensive line. And I don't think mm-hmm. that the Patriots and that defensive line is a team that you want to have a question mark against when you're that offensive line. Talking to head coach Joshua Daniels on Wednesday, I asked him straight up like, hey, what's the challenges that that defensive mm-hmm. line you know, brings and, and how is that going to, you know, affect your offensive line that's still got question marks. And he went on for about a minute and 45 seconds about how long, how, how challenging <laughs> that, 
that Patriots defense uh, line is. So that's my big concern right there because I think that the Raiders have the weapons to get it done. You know, Devontae Adams, maybe Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro come back. Josh Jacobs, we know what he's able to do. But, man, if Derek Carr doesn't have any time and there's no holes for Josh Jacobs to run through, then you mentioned a long day at Allegiant Stadium. It could very well be a long day at Allegiant Stadium, except for the home team uh, will be the ones having the long day in the silver and black. That defensive line for the Patriots is nasty, as you very well know. Yeah, it absolutely is. And that is where a guy like Christian Barmore can really make a difference. If he's healthy don't need and him. he's you capable. Don't need him <laughs> Give us a time off. <laughs> uh, Patriots fans want to see him back. I want to see him back. But no, no, all kidding aside, if he is healthy and he's able to go, that takes so much pressure off guys like Lawrence Guy and Devon Godchow and Dietrich Wise, who have been excellent in containing and re really drawing the double team from opposing offensive lines. Barmore does that on his own. He takes on at least two guys at all times. That frees up guys like Matthew Judon to get after the quarterback. Now you throw Josh Uche into the mix. Ten sacks in his last five or six games. Defensive player of the week in the AFC. Yeah. This kid is really starting to feel it right now. And if you get those guys open and in one-on-one -on -one lanes, yeah, then the Patriots can start to tee off. So that's their key right there. If Barmore's healthy, they can do it. If he's not healthy and he can't go in this game, they still have the horses to be able to do it, but it only makes it that much more difficult for opposing offensive lines to contain them when you have someone like Barmore that can draw a double team or at least draw at least decoys uh, for uh, uh, for the Patriots. So it's going to be an interesting, interesting game, Q. And we're almost yeah. at the time where we're going to make our game predictions here on Locked On Patriots Ooh. and Locked On Raiders crossover Thursday. We will do so. When your boy Q and Mike DeBate return to wrap things up here on this Crossover Thursday episode of the Locked On Patriots and Locked On Raiders podcast, Week 15 edition. But first, today's episode is brought to you by our good friends at BetOnline.net, your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds, the latest trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to college bowl season to basketball and World Cup soccer. We've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those on BetOnline as well. They're always the fastest, the easiest way to get your betting info. So head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts. You're hanging out with some friends and you're putting back a few drinks. A few becomes a few too many, and the evening comes to an end, and people start to head out. You think of calling for a ride. Nah, you live nearby. You can make it home okay. It's no big deal. What's the odds that you'll get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up. You lose your license. How about you lose your job? How about you total your car? How about you kill someone? Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. The results are tragic and they're often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe. Plan ahead. Get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. Patriots fans, Raider Nation, it is always fun when your boy Q and Mike DeBate of Locked On Patriots and Locked On Raiders lock horns, cross the streams, whatever you want to say. Uh, I absolutely love sharing the microphone with this man, and it's always a lot of fun. We're at that time, my friend. It is time for predictions. The Don't Patriots and the Raiders. You know it. what? <laughs> you know what, bud? This has been circled on the calendars of Patriots yeah. fans and Raiders fans like you can't imagine. Right. It's the opportunity for the Raiders to say, you know what? We've got the upper hand. We've got the younger generation leading our team now and Josh McDaniels and Carmen Brasillo. And... <laughs> you know the whole the whole nine yards. You've yep. got you know you've got all guys. You've got Mick Lombardi over there. You've got Bo Hardigree on those sidelines. Yep. You've got Jarrett Stidham. You've got Jakob Johnson. You've got my friend Murph's main man, Brandon Bolden. There are so many yep. Jermaine Illuminor, Chandler Jones. You name it. It just and I'm, I haven't even scratched the surface yet, folks. <laughs> so a lot of expatriates on that side right. of the ball. On the Patriots side of the ball, you're looking at it and saying we still got Bill 
Belichick. We've still got the opportunity to have the upper hand here. So, Q, we've talked about the matchups. We've talked yeah. about the big stories. How does this shake out in the Nevada desert? Paradise, Nevada, Allegiant Stadium. It's three hours past 4.05 p.m. here on the East Coast, 105 over on the West Coast. How did this one shake out in your estimation? You know, it's it's going to be interesting, man. And there's some, so many elements that go into this game. But I, I really think that uh, for the Raiders to have success and, and come away with the victory like they obviously want to and get uh, that ugly taste out of their mouth from that Thursday night football loss against the Rams at SoFi Stadium week 14, I think that they really have to have a lot of success on, on uh, first down. I mean, I, I think mm -hmm. it just has to be first down success because if not – as I mentioned in segment two, when we talked about the matchups, I just feel like that that Patriot defensive line could pin their ears back and really get after Derek Carr. And I think it's going to be a long day in the desert if uh, if they can do that consistently throughout the course of the day. So I think that they have to have a heavy dose of Josh Jacobs offensively. And also, they've got to get Devontae Adams involved early and continue to have him involved throughout the course of the game. Not just go to him early like they did on Thursday and then go away from him. He only had three catches all in the first half, none in the second half. That can't happen. They've got to make sure 17 is their weapon. They've got to keep the Patriots honest, right? Don't load, be able to just load the box or don't be able to just, uh, you know, key in on Devontae Adams. They have to have a nice um, blend of, of passes and, and throws. I mean, they have to have a balanced offense. They, they just – there's a lot of things that are going to go into this game. And, again, that, that defense of the Patriots makes me nervous. The offense – doesn't concern me that much right I, I mean I feel like that they're going to score obviously they're going to do their thing but it's not like they're some high pro prolific offense where they're just going to be throwing the ball all over the yard and putting up 35 40 points you know and it's like oh man the Raiders don't stand a chance the Raiders can match up with them offensively and, and I think they're even better than them offensively but that defense of the Patriots man they make plays they get after the quarterback they score points right I mean you know <laughs> they score points so that's that's a concern too so uh, I think this one's going to be a close one uh, I really am not good at, at score predictions. Uh, and normally I have a, a gut feeling if, the, if who's going to win this game. I honestly don't. Like, I don't even want to lie to you. I don't even have a, a, an opinion on who's going to win this game. I just think that it's really going to come down to first down. And if the Raiders can execute consistently on first down, I think they have a great chance of winning that game and getting that taste out of their mouths uh, from Thursday night, and especially being at home. You know, wanting to finish off this season really strong. They got four games left. And uh, and to beat Bill Belichick and the Patriots would be, you know, bittersweet for Raider Nation, for, you know, the, the players in that locker room, for Coach McDaniels. Obviously, he's not going to say it means something to him, but it does. We know that. Uh, we know we saw how excited he was when he beat the, uh, the Patriots when he was a Broncos head coach. So we all know it means something. But honestly, man, I think that the Raiders can win if they consistently – are successful on first down. And I know that that's not a, that's not a prediction on wh who's going to win the game, but that's how they'll win the game. If they win the game, as far as I'm concerned, but yeah, what are your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, I think you're onto something there as, as much as the first down issue is very vital for the Las Vegas Raiders. And I completely agree that it is for the Patriots. It's about third down. It's about executing in the red zone. And that's been a difficulty for the new England Patriots throughout the season. Mac Jones has had a very difficult time acclimating himself to the quick game, the screen passes that are being called by Matt Patricia and this offensive brain trust. And it's caused a little bit of difficulty and it's caused some confusion. It's even caused some expletive laden tirades. I'm sure some of your fans have seen those. Mac Jones has not been happy at times, yeah. but all seems to be on the same page with the Patriots this week. We've talked to the coaches. We've talked to Mac. Everyone assures that everyone is on the same page this week. So whether or not that translates to the field is something to be said, but if the Patriots are to be successful here, they have to execute on third down. They have to get the sticks across or move the sticks, I should say. But what they need to do also is execute in the red zone. This has not been a very good red zone team. They got two red zone touchdowns on uh, Monday night from the legs of two rookie running backs, Pierre Strong, Kevin Harris. Each one had their first touchdown of their pro career. They did that with both Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson out of the lineup. They're not going to have the luxury of sneaking up on people this week because Josh is going to game plan for these guys. He's going to know what their strengths and what their weaknesses are. So are the Patriots going to be able to utilize those weapons in the red zone? I think you may see them go to the tight ends a little bit more. The Raiders have typically had difficulty containing tight ends, especially in short yarded situations. I believe, and uh, Q, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe the, uh, the, the, uh, the Raiders are yielding just over 50 yards average per game to opposing tight ends. So if the Patriots are going to be able to utilize that dose of Hunter Henry, a dose of yeah. John Smith, who hasn't been very heavily utilized, 
But I think you may see him a little bit more, especially if Jacoby Myers is compromised or out. And if Devontae Parker is out for this game, as we had expected, Patriots are going to need good physical receivers to take on a pretty good secondary in uh, Las Vegas, and the tight ends can do it. So that's how the Patriots win this game, is execute on third down, execute in the red zone. If they can do that, they can definitely put some points up on the board, and that defense can start to take things over. I don't think this is going to be a high-scoring affair, but I do think it's going to be extremely close, and I think this one could go either way. I do, too. I really do. And and I guess to, to put a kind of bow on it, I'll say that the Raiders win this game if they have success on first down and don't turn the ball over. How about that? If there's no turnovers <laughs> in the end of the game, when it says 0 0 0, there's no turnovers and they had really good success on first down. I say that the Raiders are going to come away with the victory. But if they're consistently in second and third and long uh, and they turn the ball over a time or two. There's no shot. Bill Belichick, the Patriots, they're too good. Hell, the Patriots defense might just go ahead and score on those turnovers. So uh, that's the way <laughs> that the Raiders will lose the game. That's I think that that's I think that I feel very confident in saying that. And I 100 percent agree with you. And I'm not very confident in any aspect of this game or overconfident. <laughs> I should say I'm confident that the Patriots right. can hold their own, but I'm not overconfident in any aspect of this game except for one. And you hit the nail right on the head. If the Patriots are forcing turnovers and scoring off of turnovers, then I don't think they lose this game. They've scored more off of turnovers than any other team in the league. 85 points right now off turnovers for the New England Patriots. That special teams unit has been great. That defense has been great about taking things away. And they've been setting up the offense to make easy scores in those situations, too. Really should be higher because the Patriots have settled for field goals in more situations than not when those turnovers put them in scoring positions. So that, to me, is going to be the key for the Raiders to contain it and for the Patriots to force it. I think whoever wins that battle comes away with this victory. There you go. I like it. I like it. I'm I'm with you 100%, man. That's that's exactly what it is right there. Uh, (laughs) When I leave Allegiant Stadium on Sunday, uh, it'll be one way or the other. If there's turnovers, it'll be an L for the Raiders. If there's no turnovers, I feel good about the W. So, yeah, that's a a great way to, like I said, put a bow on this. And I, I definitely feel confident there as far as that conversation goes. Absolutely. And at that point, you know what, folks? I don't think we can say it any better than we've said it up to this point. Once again, it is my honor and my privilege to join your boy Q on these crossover episodes, as it is each and every week on Crossover Thursday. One of my favorite aspects about being a part of this network is getting a chance to share the microphone with a great stable of hosts that we have here on Locked On. And we definitely hope all of you in Patriots fandom and in Raider Nation uh, enjoy this game coming up on Sunday because I think it's going to be a great one between the Pats, the Raiders, Old Lion against Young Lion, Bill Belichick versus Josh McDaniels. Any way you want to market this, it's going to be a fun one. So on behalf of your boy Q of Locked On Raiders, I'm Mike DeBate of Locked On Patriots. Thank you for making our shows a daily part of your NFL coverage and also your first listen every day. Now that you've made us your first listen, make your second listen our good friends over at Locked On Sports Today. All the sports news you need from all the major sports, and they even give you the take of the day. How much better can it get? Download Locked On Sports Today on Odyssey app, on YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Folks, thank you once again for tuning in today. Stay safe. Stay well. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Have a great day and enjoy the game on Sunday.